Kings, and you're watching Marcy and Robbie's Clash of Kings. Yay! Welcome to the wrap-up of Day 6 here at the X Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo, and this is Glasgow Gold. Now, Day 6 Robbo traditionally is a rest day. Uh, I'm labelling this one the greatest rest day since 1966 in Kingston, Jamaica, and didn't they love a rest day back then? For us, Robbo, we uh, had a lot of time on our hands. We're not quite used to that. Uh, tell everyone what we got up to. Look, it was good to get an extra few Zs in this morning, so caught up on some much-needed sleep. You, oh, I think I've got my voice back. Uh, only to probably lose it again tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Able to do a bit of washing, restock the iron brew, uh, which is important, and also we got time to go for a little run. We actually, where we're staying here in Hamilton's not far from the, the scene of the triathlon, and so unfortunately we were a few days late for the triathlon action. Didn't stop us having a, a run around the beautiful surrounds of the Strathclyde Country Park. So it was great, Mossy, just to take stock. Obviously the whole games didn't get a rest day. Um, it would that be ridiculous? But we got our important rest day and it was well needed. March on for the final second half of the games. Well, it wasn't a rest day for everyone, Robbo. Uh, we always sell, seen Cal out there um, for a bit of a look on the streets and in particular a look at some of the sporting venues. Now, everyone since I've been here has been talking about the Armadillo mm. where a few of the sports have been played. <clears throat> yep. um, so we sent him out there onto the streets to uh, have a look at the Armadillo and uh, here's how he went. We're here on the River Clyde and we've heard rumours that there's an Armadillo on the loose. We're going to find out. Seen an armadillo around the door? No, I haven't. You haven't seen him? I've heard he's on the loose. <laughs> seen an armadillo around the door? <laughs> you haven't seen him? <laughs> I've heard there's an armadillo. <laughs> a hedgehog? <laughs> a barracuda? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen an armadillo around at all? Uh, <laughs> no. I've heard he's on the loose. He's dangerous. <laughs> In the water? <laughs> I don't think it's happening. Oh, excuse me, sir. We've got a camera here. Have you got footage of the armadillo? No. You haven't? Yeah. I heard he's on the loose. Could well be. Oh, we're going to have to. Can you help me find him? No, no, we know it. Oh. I'm an ignorant Englishman. So, after hitting the streets of Glasgow along the River Clyde, nobody knows where this armadillo is. He's lost. He's like the Loch Ness monster. Well, anyway, we might have to find him next time. That's not gold, that's armadillo gold. Mossy, in hindsight there, we possibly should have given Cal a little bit more information. Uh, the poor fella just didn't have an idea of what was going on. Uh, yeah, the armadillo, as you would have seen at the end of that clip there, is the, uh, the the building there in Glasgow. And I think they host the weightlifting there for anyone that's been. So uh, there you go, Cal will know for next time. Well, another member of the crew who needed a rest day, or actually quite deflated, was Jumpy. Mm. Now, Jumpy's had a huge couple of days here at the uh, X Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. He's been right amongst the action, Robbo. He has. Look, he's been catching up with the Royals, as we've mentioned on previous shows. He got onto the rugby pitch for the Sevens at Ibrox. He even ran the marathon uh, on, on the weekend as well. So... No surprises to, to see that Jumpy was completely spent. He was emptied, the tank was completely emptied, and he was, as you say, deflated physically and literally deflated. So poor old Jumpy, uh, not only did he need a rest, he needed to be brought back from the dead, it would have seemed. Um, and Mossy, you had a bit of a hand in, in helping him with that. Absolutely. I mean, after I did the dishes, washed my clothes, did my stretches, and we went for our run, I thought, well, I'm going to have a crack at this. We can't have a valued member of the team down. Can't leave a man behind. So uh, this is how I spent uh, the best part of a couple of hours uh, trying to bring Jumpy back to life.
baby. Well, Mossy, massive effort, mate. As you can see here, we've got Jumpy back. He's inflated. He's managed to stay up uh, upright for the first part of this show anyway. So we'll see how good a job you did. But, uh, yeah, great to have Jumpy back, and we'll see him dominating the back end of this Double X Games. Now, a massive plug to our executive producers, Why Leave Town Promotions. Don't forget to buy local, and you can check all their information out here. Now, Robbo, the Ginger Games, this is one that's the homeland for the Gingers. It's one where I can feel comfortable. <laughs> well, it is. And uh, watching the five screens I had laid out today for the <laughs> athletics, it was fantastic. I could watch uh, 1,500 metres. I could watch the wheelchair races. I could watch the long jump. I saw a particularly uh, good-looking uh, ginger yep. by the name of Greg, oh, sorry, mate. Greg yep. Rutherford. No, it wasn't you. Uh, Greg Rutherford, and you can see him here. This guy, uh, Olympic gold medalist, he's eyeing off a potential gold medal here if our Aussies can't beat him to it. Uh, he is the epitome of a uh, good-looking jumping ranger. Yeah, exactly. And we, we put it out there to uh, a lot of people uh, on the streets. So I went and actually caught up with another one of our great athletes here, in particular in Hamilton, uh, Carly from the Hamilton Ackies. Under 15. Under 15. Mm. So and g'day to all the girls out there. Uh, enjoyed spending our three minutes in the shops out there on the streets of Hamilton. Uh, I'm giving it to her, Robbo. She was sensational. I think she scored about 400 goals uh, in the first 10 games of the season. And she gets my Ginger Games prize for the day. Well, as always, Robbo, we like to be inspired by the great man, Robbie Burns. Yes, the Bard. Uh, he's a hero here. They've got a national holiday uh, in his honour. Um, and so, as we do each night, we get our 400 metre specialist, Craig Burns, who has a strong link to Robbie, to read some poetry out. Let's hear from him now. For gold the merchant ploughs the main, the farmer ploughs the manor. But glory is the soldier's prize, the soldier's wealth is honour. The brave poor soldier near despise, nor count him as a stranger. Remember he's his country's stay, in day and hour of danger. And Mossy, uh, look, I don't think Bernsey hasn't set foot on the track yet. He ha he's had no races. All he's had to do is do our poetry segment each night. Uh, he must be itching to get out there. But how pumped up is he going to be having read all this Burns poetry? I think what he's doing is just amazing and he's making the games. Absolutely. I'll tell you what else is making the games, uh, Robbo, is the fact people can come here and win competitions. They can win medals. So let's have a look at uh, the update of Glasgow Gold medal tally. Yes, Mossy. Well, it's slowed down a little bit at the top there. Australia narrowly holding on. They've got 34 golds. We've got four more today. Daniel Tranter in the 200 individual medley as uh, Clyde's hogging the pot of gold here. The women's medley, relay, 4x100. We've got another gold there. And then in the shooting, it was Adam Bella and David Chapman getting a couple of golds there. So it takes us to 34. Mossy, England, 33. They're looking ominous. And you can't uh, get enough. You don't get sick and tired of hearing the rattle of the coins going no. into the pot of gold. That's right. Well, it's still filling up. But Canada now, they've moved into third place, 16. Scotland stays on 13, and that's their highest tally ever in Com Games history. Uh, so if we look at the all-important tally now, Scotch Ralea, 47 gold, 138 total. England, 33 gold and 93 total. I think England's heard about our plans of Scotch Australia, Mossy. They're rallying around. Uh, chief Demission, I'm not sure who their chief is, but I know Lord Coe has been in their ear saying, look, the Aussies are up to something. They're forming a, an alliance uh, ahead of the vote for the Scottish independence, which is on September 18th, uh, later this year after the game. So, look, they're worried. They're rallying the troops and they're trying to hose down this threat of Scotch Australia. Good luck to you. Well, today we saw another day of athletics out there. We know we're huge lovers of athletics because let's just face it, it's the purest of sports. Um, tomorrow, it's a big jumping day celebrating the bringing back Jumpy uh, from Oblivion. Yeah, look, I can't wait to, to get stuck into the jumps. But just quickly today, Mossy, my play of the day was young Nick Huff who ran and jumped his way to a fourth place in his first senior meet. Uh, quite phenomenal. He's a guy that rises to the big occasion. So I think he's going to be uh, headed for Gold Coast Gold in another four years or so. Kurt Fernley was out there, Christy Dawes, both of them in the wheelchair events, easily going through to the finals. Sophie Stamels won to watch. She's in the heptathlon tomorrow. We'll be there to cheer her on. She might even jag a medal. Uh, so lots of great action, Mossy. And uh, yeah, it's a day of jumps tomorrow. So let's sink our teeth into that. 
Uh, Nick Boyich, he's a jumper that you're a massive fan of. He is the tall, self-proclaimed tallest man in athletics. I'm actually putting it out there who's probably number two. Um, but you know, Behind Jumpy. Yeah, well, that's exactly <laughs> right. And, and Jumpy, well, he can leap uh, tall armadillos. Yes. Yeah, he's going to be out there tomorrow, Nick. Yep, and we'll let, we had a chance to catch up with Nick in the holding camp at Gateshead. Uh, let's see how that went. Now, is it true that you've been uh, practicing around here in Newcastle uh, over the, the River Tyne here um, by jumping some of the big, tall buildings and in particular the Harbour Bridge? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yesterday we went for a bit of a tour and I did some parkour jumping as part of my training, so it was good. So are you a regular parkour uh, um, participant? Not regular, no. Um, I tried every now and then, but nothing fancy, no. Now, mate, this is your first uh, big team, the, the senior team, uh, and it is a big team in particular. You're the biggest in athletics in, in the world. Um, but what's the vibe like so far? Um, it's good, yeah, everyone's sort of here now when we're just sort of getting ready. Um, there's a few guys at some comps today and I'm off at Birmingham tomorrow. So um, the weather unfortunately isn't the best, but that's what we expected, so that's why we trained for this sort of weather. So it's exciting, everyone's sort of here and final few preparations before we head over to Glasgow on Monday, I think, so. Now, uh, Boyich being a very Scottish name, yep. um, I'm sure you've got um, some heritage. Whereabouts in, in Scotland are they from? Um, I'm from Edinburgh, actually. <laughs> yeah, there's a castle over there called the Castle de Boyich. So, um, oh, <laughs> nice. Very from there somewhere. So, very, very good. Yeah. Um, well, can you just say your name in, in Scottish? Oh, I can speak Scottish, but I can't really say my name too well. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah. Very happy with that. Zdravo jasem, Nick Boyich. Ivi glad the Mosian Robo Glasgow Gold. Well, Mossy, moving from Nick on to Vic, and this is another sport that involves uh, jumping. This is running and jumping, and it's the steeplechase. Now, Vic Mitchell, uh, she's very near and dear to our hearts. At the Melbourne uh, National Competition, she won, and we she loves to dye her hair, Mossy, and so we put this challenge out because she's had pink hair and yellow hair, green hair, the whole lot. But we said, why don't you, when you get to Glasgow, dye your hair the same colour as Clyde here, the beautiful Scottish thistle purple. Well, let's have a look at her. She's gone and done it. And tomorrow night, we get to see it on the Commonwealth Game stage. Vic Mitchell running and jumping, looking like Clyde. How good is that going to be? Well, I'm calling this one Vic's Games. I have to admit, there's been plenty of people involved, plenty of uh, inflatables, plenty of mascots there. But Vic... We salute you. One thing that I hope dearly that doesn't happen to Vic tomorrow night is this. It's going to be so close. Uh, I, uh, I, I'd love to see Vic win this. It's going to be all... That's exactly right, Robo. Wasn't that a real struggle for Well, Vic? it was. She, um, she, does, she got an early shower um, <laughs> that, that night. And uh, look, I hope she can keep the purple hair dry and intact. And we'll cheer her home for uh, what's sure to be a gold medal. Uh, if not a gold medal, it'll be a silver. Uh, either way, the Aussies, will, they'll duke it out. It's Jen Lacaz, she's also in it, and Madeline Heiner. I'm calling gold, silver, bronze, however you want to do it. Um, they can all dye their hair. It can be in purple. that order or any other order. That's right. It could be bronze, gold, silver. We don't really care. We just want to see some athletics gold. And we will see that tomorrow, I reckon, Robbo. Well, that's all we've got time here for another day on the Double X Commonwealth Games here in Glasgow. We hope you enjoyed your rest day. We look forward to tomorrow with great optimism. And why don't we uh, leave this one, Robbo, by hearing from the hardest working police force in the history of the Commonwealth Games. That's not cool. That's Glasgow.